What was usually funny was just the process of, of how he gets out of a difficult situation or how he gets into a difficult situation. <laughs> Done your revision? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> I've concentrated on trigonometry. Uh, I've done calculus mainly. Oh. I believe they concentrated on calculus last year. Oh, dear. <laughs> Quiet, ladies and gentlemen, please. The exam starts now. Bodily expression, particularly with Mr. Bean, is so very, very important. It's sort of screaming at you, you know, there may be no words, but you're being shouted at, I think, very loudly by the bodily expression. The word compelling is quite good because I think that's what draws you into a lot of Mr. Bean sketches. You only had to have the starting point of the idea. He gets locked out of his room or he's going to a swimming pool or something like that. And then you could be pretty confident that we would be able to, to make it work. Would those who answer the green calculus papers please put them in the green box? And those who answer the white trigonometry papers please put them in the white box. What I've always done on the Mr. Beans is, as it were, I've done the charcoal outline and then Rowan adds all the colour and the texture and I laugh at him while he's doing it. I said stop writing. <laughs> Will you stop writing? It is 30 years since the first Mr Bean was shown on British television and it became an instant hit. Between 1990 and 1995, the team went on to produce 14 episodes in total. I didn't know until this moment that there were only 14. I thought there were probably 114, and that Rowan had been coining it in for years and years, making this never-ending flow of Mr Beans. We did the other 14 episodes in dribs and drabs. We didn't make 14 at once, we made two, and then we made three more, and then we made one more, and then we made four more, and eventually we got <laughs> to this rather paltry sum of 14. <laughs> they were always given a sort of prime spot and earned their keep there. And suddenly, you know, people realised that visual comedy could actually hold a large audience. After the overnight success of episode one, the team was in need of new material, and comedy writer Robin Driscoll was hired. In your own time, sir. No rush. He would also feature in various sketches as a straight man to Rowan. I would say in the story of Mr Bean, it's Rowan, Robin, and then possibly me. I was thinking, in a way, Rowan and I did the obvious ones. We got the low-hanging fruit. And what was brilliant about Robin is that he's just kept, as it were, squeezing the lemon, finding new things, finding different ways, taking a little thread, be it to do with a car or with a teddy or anything like that.